Men accused in the kingdom con wants the restitution order dropped. Former JP president Bill Stanger blames Vermont leaders for the scale of the EB5 scandal. Stanger's lawyer tells me the discovery of new memos shows their foreknowledge of fraud makes them responsible for investor losses on the never built ANC bio project and that Stanger who just got out of jail shouldn't have to pay $250,000 back and they're asking a judge for a new hearing. Brooks MacArthur, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here, Darren. So you say you've discovered new information that shows the state regulators ignored and failed to act when told about money problems with the proposed biomedical facility in Newport. What is this new evidence that you say proves that? Yeah, so we received uh, two memos from uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission. We received them from uh, counsel here in Vermont that's suing the state based on the state's negligence in this EB-5 scandal. And those two memos from the Securities and Exchange Commission make clear that as early as February 3rd and February 4th of 2015, uh, top state officials knew what the problems were with the ANC bio uh, facility and suggested that the state may not want to go forward with it. Ultimately, they let the state make their own decision, but it's clear to us that the state knew the problems and still uh, greenlit the project to allow it to go forward. When you say state leaders, who? Who knew what, yeah. when? We know that former commissioner of the Department of Financial Regulation, Sue Donegan, knew in February of 2015. Uh, Deputy Commissioner Mike Pichek knew in early February of 15. Uh, General counsel to DFR knew in 2015. Uh, other officials at the Department of Financial Regulation knew, and we believe that uh, potentially uh, top officials in the Shumlin administration, including Counsel Sarah London, uh, would have known. So do you think then this goes all the way to the top of that administration, as in former Governor Shumlin? I can't answer that. I don't know if that's the case or not. Uh, I can't imagine as uh, high profile uh, of a project this was and as important of the information that was disclosed by the federal government to state regulators uh, that somebody somewhere would not have counseled the governor, but I have no idea. That's a question for, for the state, frankly. Why, in your view, would the state then proceed with this project, proceed with marketing this project if, in fact, they had been alerted about this fraud? I don't know the answer to that. My only speculation is they were under a tremendous amount of pressure given the jobs that were on the line here uh, to, to allow that project to go forward, to allow the marketing to continue, to allow the fundraising to continue so that people who were relying on those jobs would get paid. But that fraud was already happening. So how then does this get your client, Bill Stanger, off the hook if, again, that fraud was already underway when top officials found out? Well, what's clear from these memos is that the federal government, through the Securities and Exchange Commission, were very concerned about Ariel Kiros and Bill Kelly and believe that those two were at the heart of the fraud and even communicated to, to state leaders uh, in February, early February, February 3rd and February 4th of 2015 that Bill Stanger may not know what's going on. The state regulators knew they still allowed Bill Stanger to go out and market the project rather than either invite him into what they knew so that he could help stop it but when the state leaders said uh, you were going to have the green light to go forward, he believed that the state had done their due diligence and the projects were good projects, having no idea about the financial fraud that Ariel Kuros and Bill Kelly were engaging in. So what's so explosive about these new memos is that Bill Stanger's January 2015 statement played no part in the state's decision to allow that project to go forward. These investors wouldn't have lost any money had the state done its job. And they simply didn't do their job here.
Much more with Brooks MacArthur this Sunday morning on You Can Quote Me and in our next hour on the Channel 3 News at 6, our team coverage continues. Calvin Cutler is getting reaction tonight from now State Treasurer Mike Pichak.